I'm Jerry McLaughlin, I'm here at Halton Stadium, home of Witness Vikings, and for one season only, the Saints as well, to chat to club captain Paul Wellens. I'm here, it should be an interview, but I'm going to take him on one on one. Mano a mano on. No, no, I mean, I don't mean. God, oh, not the eyes! Yeah, that, that, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. I meant, I meant a game of chess. If that's all right. Do you want to make the first move? Yes, please. Attack. All oh, right, I get you. Hmm. Very good move. <laughs> Very clever. Well, obviously you've played chess before then, but I want to ask you about how you first got into, into rugby as well. Was it, was it something that you did at school or did you join a club? Was that the route that you went, you went through? Uh, yeah, I joined local clubs really. I mean, it's kind of been, been from St. Helens. It's always kind of assumed that you, you'll end up playing rugby uh, of, of some form. And, uh, you know, I, I was a keen St. Helens supporter as a young, young lad as well. And I was fortunate that my school had a team as well. And, uh, you know, that was really my first taste of rugby through the school team. So, you know, from there on really, it just kicked on from there. <laughs> Or are you from still big Saints fans? Uh, well, my eldest, elder brother Kevin, uh, he had a, a spell at Saints in 1985. He played for a season. Uh, he's uh, and so we kind of had an affiliation with the club as well because my dad was a, a scout there, a talent scout for coming on 30 years. Oh, it's about so, who you know, isn't it? It's yeah, about who yeah. You do. <laughs> it's kind of that way. In fact, though, the, the, you know, a lot of people presume that because my dad was a scout there, he was the one who took me down. But he kind of came about a different way than that. I actually had a friend who who'd signed for the club, and he was in the juniors at the time, and they were short on players. And, and my friend said, uh, I, "I know a lad who'll come down and play." And, from then on, I went down and trained. And, and That's I, bizarre how yeah. happenstance it was then. Do you and look back and just think that was a real stroke of luck there? or? Yeah, I think so. I mean, because different. at this time, I'd left playing rugby league. I'd gone playing rugby union at a local club called West Park. And you know, I was quite happy there playing with some other friends. And, you know, I hadn't really thought much about going back to rugby league at that point. And, and then when I got the phone call, yeah, I don't think I would have took that opportunity up, uh, other than that it was Saints who was calling me. And obviously the team was supported. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually played a year at the club, you know, on, on amateur terms without getting paid before I actually signed a professional contract. The back end of '98, I made my debut. Right. Yeah. And, and is that something still really sort of fresh in your mind right now? I can still remember it clear as day, but it, it does seem a long time ago now that obviously you know the the, the coaches that have worked under the amount of players that's come and gone in, in that period of time. You know, that, that's what makes it seem a while ago, but certainly the memories are still pretty clear. What, what do you think the, the older professionals were like at the time? How did they treat you when you first came in? Was it, uh, was it different to how you treat younger players now, or, or is that actually uh, formed how you treat younger players? I, I would say it's had a, had a burn on it. I mean, at the time when I came into the team, Chris Joint was the captain, and he was very good in, in bringing young, young players through. Not, not so much uh, the fact of, uh, you know, on the field, but off the field, making sure you were well looked after. If you know, if you didn't have a pair of boots, he'd sort you out a pair of kit bag. Just, just little things like that, yeah. to, just to make you feel wanted and make you feel that you were welcome in that environment. And uh, you know, that's something that I try and do now with young players. That you know, just to, if they ever need anything, if I can get it for them, I'll try my best. Do you ever feel yourself going, "Wow, that's exactly what happened to me in reverse"? I do, but I also remember back to you know how good it made me feel that one of the senior players had, had taken the time to do something for you. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I think that can have a big. It certainly had a big burn on me as a young player. That you know, it made me feel comfortable in that environment. And uh, because what happens when you're a young player and you go into a team, especially from my point of view as a St. Helens supporter, I was in awe of a lot of these players. You know, they, they were kind of my, my boyhood heroes. You yeah. know, the likes of Chris Joint and uh, you know people like that. Is, is it hard to pick out? A favourite moment for you, or something that really stands out? Uh, I mean, it's difficult. I mean, because I've been involved in so many successful teams down the years. I yeah. mean, I've, I count myself so fortunate that I've probably played in the best period of you know, just ten or so years that the club's ever had. And yeah. from a personal point of view, it was probably winning the Man of Steel in 2006. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's the, the top accolade in the game uh, from an individual uh, standing and uh, you know to be named you know the best player in the competition throughout the course of the season was. It was something that even even now I look back, you can't quite believe that it's something that you achieved. And uh, you know, you look down the list of some of the, the players and the legends over the years that have won that trophy before you. It does kind of you know boggle your mind a little bit. Well, There's some great talent coming through. It seems at the moment, in particular, is there anyone that you would you would pin out as someone you you're looking forward to seeing how their career develops. 
Yeah, I mean, certainly for me, I think uh, Johnny Lomax, the, the way he's, I mean, we, we've always knew he was a he was, he was a talented player and it took, it took him a while for him to come out of his shell, but... Is that uh, something you feel like you, you feel not in some way responsible for, to kind of encourage and bring him out of his shell? Is it something you feel... I mean, I mean, you can try, but I think, you know, people, you know, he's an intelligent lad, so people yeah. develop at their own time, don't they? And, and, and you know, sooner, sooner or later, you know, they, they, they find the feet within, within the group. And Johnny's certainly at that stage now where you've, you sense that he knows he belongs in this environment. Uh, you know, his, his performances certainly just suggest that, the way he's been playing over, you know, the, the early part of this season. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a really talented player and I'm sure he's going to be one of the top players in the competition for a long time. With regards to yourself being a one club kind of man, you know what I mean, you've been at the club your entire career. Do you find it interesting chatting with the likes of um, Kel Eastman obviously moving and changing code in particular? Is that something that's kind of hard for you to understand? Or like you said, you, you, know, you played Union when you were younger yourself. When, when I look at it from the perspective of uh, when I was a St. Hel like kind of, from a St. Helens fan's perspective, yeah. I can understand where, how they would find it difficult to comprehend where a, where a player would move, move on. Especially when uh, you know he's, he's at a great club and things are going well, but the more and more over the years I've spent time with professional players, you know you do realise that sometimes players move on. Uh, sometimes yeah. they, they want a different challenge or they want different things from from the life, and uh, you know you learn to respect that as a fellow professional. And you know, Carl's, Carl's a great young lad, and uh, he's had a difficult time of it over the last few few uh, few months. I think you know it's been a big decision for him and. I think when, once the dust settles and you know, kind of the emotions took out the situation, I'm sure everyone at the club will wish him all the well. And you know, I know the players certainly think that way. And you know, we hope Kyle you know makes a huge success of it in rugby union. Uh, yeah. But but equally, you know, you're disappointed when you lose some of your better players, and uh, you know that's always disappointing. But it's it's kind of something you have to accept. Well, I mean, with regards to yourself, I mean, your, your contract's looming very yeah. very shortly. Is there something you would consider, a, you know, a change like that? Would have you ever considered playing anywhere anywhere else? I've, I've always said that you know if it was to leave St. Helens, my first consideration would be a, a rugby union. But I mean now I'm I'm, I'm 31. Uh, you know I've got this year and next year left on my contract, and and I'm kind of just playing it by ear. And you know I'm not sure how long I'm going to play for. Uh, obviously the you know the, the body. You don't have a date in, 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 in mind. No, no. I'm, yeah. I'm at the, the the stage at the moment where you know my body feels in good condition. You know I'm enjoying my rugby, which is I, th I think you know first and foremost you need to still be enjoying what you're doing. You know, I'm, I'm still at a great club where you know the lads are great, and you know I'm enjoying going to training every day. So ideally, and uh, you know, if things go to plan, I'll, I'll finish my career at St. Helens and, and, and finish, uh, you know, a one club man like you said. Good, good enough season anyway. Do you feel like the Saints are getting into their stride now at the moment? Like, do you feel like things are starting to kind of click a bit, a bit better? I know there's a lot yeah. of injuries to contend with. Yeah, I'm, I mean, we've had to, funny enough we've, for the last two or three seasons we seem to have picked up in, injuries as you know regular occurrence so it's yeah. kind of something that we're used to dealing with and uh, we mentioned earlier the, the young players that we have within, within our group uh, you know they've come in and done a fantastic job and uh, you know that gives you as a senior player it gives you huge confidence to know that these young players can, can come in straight into the side and fit seamlessly into you know to what we're trying to achieve and uh, you know we've got a new coach this year in Royce and He's brought in some some of his own ideas, and it's something that you know we're continuing to work on. You know, we feel that we're improving every every week that we, we come in. So it's still relatively early in the season, but we like to think that we're moving in the right direction, and hopefully our performances over the next few months will, will suggest that. And what what's changed from the start of the season? Was it just being in a, a new stadium with things a bit too too new? No, I think uh, certainly from from our players' perspective, we kind of had to, had to have a good look at ourselves. Uh, you know, we're at a new stadium. This is the way it is. You know, as you look around, you witness is a fantastic stadium, great facilities, and you know we're fortunate that while we're away from our own ground, that you know we can play at a stadium like this. So mm -hmm. uh, we just we just had a look in house and uh, the team, and rather than make excuses about you know not being a, a regular your home ground or not having this or injuries are a problem, we just kind of decided to roll our sleeves up and get stuck in. And uh, you know, when every player makes that commitment, like we have done over the last five weeks. <laughs> You generally see a you know a rise in performance. So you never see yourself leaving the club then with with memories like that and in moments like that to change. You, you never fancy a change, something something different before you I before mean, you finish your career. I'm certainly open to the idea of change. I would never you know close the door or anything like that. But as it stands at the moment, I'm really happy and uh, you know 
I have a great relationship with the people at the club, not only you know the players and the coaching staff, but you know the people upstairs. And you know, I have a lot of respect for the way the, the club's been run over the last few, over the last however many years since I've been here. That you know the players are, are well looked after, and uh, you know that that's what I enjoy about about the club. Really, it's a real family atmosphere, and and you know you don't go to training and go home. You, there's a there's a duty of care there towards the players. I think you'll find my friend that that is checkmate. I think you'll find. Good luck the rest of the season. No worries, thank you. <laughs>